capture this in a linear regression, this nonlinear effect observed in the data, at least in the scatter plot. Well, there's a few ways of doing it, and I think the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to simply calculate a um, variable that's going to represent the quadratic function. And what we have to do is simply multiply the IQ score by itself. So, literally, we're just going to multiply the IQ variable, so we'll call it IQ squared. And I'm going to create this variable out of my IQ variable. So IQ times IQ, so IQ squared. And it's going to be called IQ squared in my uh, data. Whoops, it actually created it in the wrong data set. I should have just closed this down. I don't need that anymore. So I want to look at my nonlinear regression data. I'll have to do that again. IQ squared. So IQ times IQ. And we get a IQ squared variable. So this is going to be a new variable in the regression equation. So the way we're going to calculate this is by doing something called a hierarchical multiple regression, which I haven't yet uh, produced a video for, but it's not that complicated. We're simply going to enter IQ in the first step of the regression analysis, and then we're going to follow it up with this IQ squared variable. And this IQ squared variable is going to represent the hypothesis, or the term, that uh, there's one bend in the scatter plot as we observed in the actual data. This bend here in, the, in this part of the data needs to be represented by a variable, and it's going to be represented by this IQ, scare, IQ squared variable. So to do the hierarchical multiple regression, we go into uh, Analyze, Regression, Linear, and I put performance into my dependent variable, and then I put IQ into the first block, block one of one, and then I click Next, and I add my IQ squared variable into that. So SPSS is going to perform two regression analyses, one of them with just the re regression, the linear regression term, and then another one with, which includes both the linear and the nonlinear linear effect at the same time. And what I want to look for is a statistically significant change in my R squared value. And that, I'm only going to do the basics, so I'm going to click on Continue, and I'm going to click on OK. And SPSS produces the model summary uh, table. And we've got our R value of 0.352. Now that's for model 1. That includes only, only the IQ variable, the regular one, that represents the linear effect. So that's an R squared of 0.124, and that's statistically significant. Uh, and this F value of 49.05, SPSS calls it F change, but that's really just change from nothing, not including anything in the model. So with just the linear effect, it's 0.352 R, R squared, uh, adjusted R squared of 0.122, and it's statistically significant. Now look at this F value here of 49.075. That equals exactly the same F value in this ANOVA table which we get regularly uh, in a regression analysis. Uh, and the F value is exactly the same. And that's what we ex would expect. Model 1 it only includes one variable. And it's got an F value of 49.075 with degrees of freedom of, of 1, uh, 1 in the numerator, and 347 um, in, the, uh, in the total sums of squares, and residual of 346. Uh, so the statistically significant effect for the linear effect, I mean the linear effect is statistically significant, but more importantly, once you add the IQ squared variable, which represents the nonlinear effect, we get an R value of 0 0.420. So that's combined. Both the linear and nonlinear effect combined gives you an R of 0 0.420, which is an R squared change uh, of 0.053. So about 5% of the variability in the dependent variable job performance is being accounted for by the addition of the nonlinear effect, which is pretty decent 
uh, and what you might expect in 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 nature. Now, importantly, this 